Okay, so I've completed um, wiring the line voltage portion of the chassis. And just to review, I had to um, replace these resistors, or rather just wire them in parallel to the open resistors here. Uh, these caps, one microfarads and a half uh, microfarad for the audio. I wired in this, uh, this power cord here. This is a three wire. Um, I added this uh, terminal strip to the um, screw here, for nut and bolt for this resistor. <clears throat> and uh, grounded the uh, third wire for safety. I put a, um, a fuse in as well. Uh, this one is a 2 amp. I know that the radio only draws 100 watts when it runs, but the tubes, it'll draw some power when the tubes warm up. Um, then uh, I also rewired the power switch, um, added some cord so that this switch can actually make it to the front panel again. And another interesting thing to note about the power switch is I it was getting pretty frail here. Um, the, unfortunately, there are no solder lugs on the power switch. These cloth wires go right into the assembly. So I uh, put some hot melt glue around this to sort of shore them up a little bit. It's a uh, hot melt glue uses a special type for gluing metal to metal surfaces. And I found that it's pretty, um, pretty good, pretty reliable. So we got the power switch, we got the power cord. Um, Everything should be ready to go to try this thing out. First, I'd like to try to test the tubes and make sure that none of them have uh, shorts or anything like that because we don't want to damage the, um, the uh, audio frequency and uh, RF coils. Okay, so I looked up the tubes for my um, tube settings for my Type 1 my Heathkit 1T21. And here we have... Uh, one of the globe tubes on there, which is testing good, or rather good enough. So um, we'll check them all and make sure that uh, they're working for emission and move on to testing the radio. It's interesting to note that the settings for the Type 26 tube are wrong <laughs> for this thing. Can't even get the filament to light, even though the filament continuity is there. So I'm going to have to assume that the Type 26 tubes are okay. Okay, I'm doing I'm doing a power supply test. I actually ran into some trouble where, um, due to a previous repair, someone really messed up the wiring on this thing. So I fixed that. They actually um, incorrectly wired the third choke. So there was no high voltage getting through whatsoever. <laughs> so everything's good. We're going through a light bulb here. Uh, no load attached, but the power supply is warming up nicely. Um, the next step is going to be then to actually hook it up to the uh, radio chassis itself over here. I've also got a speaker wired up ready to go. This is out of an old radio. Uh, that speaker includes um, its original... Uh, audio transformer, which is, I would guess, like 3K or so. I'm just going to a 6BQ5, so that should be fine for this radio. All right, more soon. Okay, so we've fully instrumented this thing. We're going to try it out. So we've got the uh, volt. This is the plate voltage, 165 expected, 145. Um, there's a second uh, plate voltage, it's 145, and then uh, this is the AC current, and then we have a variac here. Um, let's we'll see if we can pick something up. Okay, let's see if I can focus here. And we will turn on the Variac. And bring it up slowly. We could watch the uh, plate voltage climb here. Uh, got as high as 24 volts, so we'll go a little... Now we're starting to hear something out of the speaker. 76. That's good.
the RF gain control causing some popping on the speaker, that's a good sign. Let's turn up to 80. Here we go. Okay. Starting to hear some audio. We'll just turn it up uh, to 90%. We can hear noise to the speaker, that's a good sign. That's cool. This is great. Alright man, thing works. This is great. A lot about us humans by our voices. The interesting thing is we get a lot of pops from this rheostat. This is the antenna goes directly into the rheostat first thing. Um, which is a strange thing to do. This is a you know ten watt rheostat, but it or maybe two watt or something on that order. It doesn't need to be that big. It could be a carbon uh, potentiometer. It's just a two K pot that goes right across the antenna and the wiper is connected to the grid of the first RF uh, amplifier tube over here. <laughs> it's certainly not conventional. So basically to vary the um, to vary the, the audio you're varying the RF actually going into the whole uh, radio itself. So um, and it's on a wire wound thing so it's, I've sprayed it with deoxid but anytime you hit a little piece of dust it's gonna pop and I'm not going to complain about it because I have a good rheostat here. I don't want to replace the original equipment, but that's how they shipped them. Was with <laughs> with this thing, and I'm sure back in the day it didn't take much use before you started get, getting pops on there. So this is great. This thing's working really well here. So I think the next step is to do something about this this dial here. So the dial um, broke off, and it's it's not a frequency scale, it's a logging scale, it just goes simply from 1 to 100. So what I'm going to try to do is um, try to mend this with uh, some solder, see if I can solder it back together and uh, have something good enough uh, just to display for logging purposes. You don't really, we don't really care about frequency display, it doesn't, accuracy is not an issue here, it's not a frequency display. And this is the reason why we do it to listen to music like this on this old radio. Although this music is certainly after the uh, <laughs> a solid uh, decade after the, this thing was made. I'm sure it was listened to on this radio. Okay, so uh, turn that down. Um, we're running the radio just to burn in, see how uh, it does, if there's any problems or anything like that over the long haul. Um, meanwhile, I'm repairing this um, this dial here, and I've it looks like it's uh, brass, so I've been able to uh, solder it back together um, using uh, some flux over here. So we'll see if this holds up. I'm going to bolt it back on. There seems to be ample room here to screw it in, even if it's a little shorter. It's probably about uh, an eighth of an inch shorter than it was before. Um, I test, tested it over here on this end with a little solder just to see if it would stick. So I'll give this a shot and with any luck uh, this will be the repair. Okay, here we go. The uh, dial's repaired. Let me tune in. Station. Okay, so this thing is uh, repaired, and here is the uh, repaired portion. Um, as you can see, you're really only missing a little. Whoops, focus. You're missing only a little bit here. So it's uh, the repair is pretty well. It looks good, and the nice thing is 
we get to use the original equipment. So printing one out. Okay, next thing we're going to mount this back in the chassis. Okay, so here it is. Uh, even the uh, dial light works just fine, which is huge. And uh, everything's quite nice here. The next step's going to be I'm going to um, do some Howard uh, Restore Finish. I don't think that, um, I don't think that, I'm not a woodworking person, I'm not going to restore the cabinet, but um, I'll just do some Howards on this and clean it up a little bit. Okay, here's the back of the radio. I uh, went ahead and screwed down the back cover, and I have a uh, antenna jack installed here um, for an antenna clip lead like this. And um, yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, here's the front of the uh, radio, and if I turn this off, you can see the dial light. And right now it's warming up. Um, completed the, uh, the restoring uh, finish on this radio. Looks really sharp. Um, that, you know, that uh, trim up here just showed up really well. Cool stuff.